Right. Hi, everyone. So we're here to talk about two-factor authentication, uh, often called 2FA. Uh, who here actually uses two-factor authentication today? How many of you think two-factor authentication is a good user experience for mom? <laughs> How many of you use uh, or are familiar with Authy? Okay, so there's a lot of Authy users. We're actually a, a, a long-time partner in the Bitcoin industry. Uh, we have, uh, uh, obviously, we work with all sorts of different solutions with our Google Authenticator compatible client. Uh, but we're also directly partnered with people like uh, Coinbase, uh, Uphold, uh, Bitgold, uh, CEX.io, and uh, 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 quite a few others. We're, we're actually pretty big in the Bitcoin space. Uh, and we've been doing this for a long time, and, and we're certainly not Bitcoin specific. We have a, a very broad offering that works in a lot of different circumstances. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about the state of two-factor authentication today. There are really four main consumer, customer-friendly ways of doing two-factor authentication. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to do two-factor that requires devices or complex circumstances, but if you really want to make it easy, there's really only a couple of things that are working today. Push is the latest one of those things, and this is really the direction that the analysts and the industry is pushing people towards, uh, no pun intended. Uh, push is a way to get rid of those numbers and tokens. This is the solution that mom might actually use. Software and hardware tokens. Uh, this is a solution that's been around for a while. Google Authenticator made it popular. Uh, RSA tokens are a type of uh, solution that does this. It's just a, a, an offline token generator that uh, gives a user a, a number that they can type in and it can be validated on the other side. SMS. This is kind of a, a, a lowest common denominator solution. Most people can actually receive an SMS uh, and respond to it. It doesn't work everywhere. When you're traveling, it doesn't work. It can be very expensive uh, elsewhere. Sometimes there's delays in the network. Uh, and it's not as user-friendly as it could be, but it does work in a lot of circumstances if the user doesn't have a smartphone or they don't want to install an application. Uh, and then finally, uh, voice is a good fallback for people that don't even have SMS-capable phones or maybe somebody that can't actually use uh, a, a text-based system, uh, uh, somebody with a, a, a vision disability. <clears throat> now, push-based push authentication is by far the most secure, the most user-friendly, and the most reliable, and that's really why the industry is kind of going that way. But it doesn't apply in all cases. Push requires an online connection, so you might need some fallbacks. And so, uh, the best type of solution will incorporate all of these types of options so that the user can make the choice for their particular circumstance of what's going to work for them at that moment in time. Um, but uh, with, with push, the user interaction is, is much better, and you're going to see that in a little bit. And the security is better. Why is the security better? Uh, one problem with uh, SMS is that you don't actually control the whole channel for that SMS. There are some places where it could con conceivably be captured, um, but more importantly, with both SMS and token, uh, you have a phishing potential attack. Somebody can put up a fake site and capture both your username and password and a valid token and immediately get in and just give you an error message and ask you for another token. Um, so, so there are some security risks, and with push, it's actually a digitally signed bi-directional communication between the user's device and the service that's uh, authenticating the user. And there is no man-in-the-middle attack. There is no opportunity there. So that's really why it's more secure. It also gives the user more context, more information about what it is that they're actually approving or, or uh, what, what transaction they're actually committing to. It's transaction-specific rather than just a generic number. <clears throat> and because of that, it extends well beyond uh, just logging in or changing your password. You can use this for actual transactions. You can just prompt them just that second factor uh, and make, the, make sure that they have their phone. So Authy actually incorporates all of these solutions into a single offering. You can mix and match each of the techniques that I just talked about. Uh, our Authy One code is our SMS and voice component. Uh, Authy Soft Token is our, our soft token or token generation uh, solution that works offline. And Authy One Touch, which was uh, released last year, 
is uh, our push-based authentication solution. So I want to show a few things here to help you understand what this looks like when you mix and match all of these techniques together and you lead with the easiest to use solution while still allowing yourself to fall back to these other solutions. I'm going to start with a, uh, a customer example here. Coinbase has been using us for about uh, four years and uh, uh, Coinbase has implemented their solution in a, in a very particular way that I think provides a good user experience and can demonstrate a value add that we provide over a Google Authenticator style application. So I'm going to sign in here. Uh, one thing to note is you're in charge of uh, when you integrate Authy into your application, you're in charge of the user experience. You're in charge of the decisions like, hey, am I going to allow them to stay signed into this computer? Nothing really changes in that process. Authy's role is to make sure that the user has this device and when they're working with this device that their user experience is awesome. That's really what we do. You get to control uh, within your application. Your application does not need to be a web application. Coinbase also integrates us with their mobile application. So uh, uh, I'm showing the web version here. but. Uh, I uh, want you to be clear that this works in virtually any solution because we are cloud-based, we are API-based, it's very easy to integrate with us. So when I go to sign in, you see over here on the phone, and I have to click over here, uh, oop, wrong, wrong phone. It actually, if I had clicked on the right phone, it would have uh, brought me straight to this, uh, straight to the application using the push notification and straight to this Coinbase token. And that's one of the value adds. With Google Authenticator, it's like, oh, now I need my token. Let me see. Where's the Google Authenticator app? Okay, where is the Coinbase token? It's one of these here. Uh, we'll lead you right to that when you implement it correctly. Uh, and I could be using uh, my phone. I could be using my uh, Chrome application that works on any desktop, Windows, Mac, Linux. Uh, I could be using Android. I, could, I, I have multiple device capability with this, so I, I have some redundancy over just a text message which is only going to come to my phone. Verify the token and we're in. Okay, so that was a, an existing customer example. Uh, actually, I want to show one more thing here. How many of you guys made it to South Beach last night or this trip? Anybody go out? Yeah, well, we, we were out last night, and I actually lost my phone. It was a really good night. I went to the AT&T store, got a new phone. I downloaded the uh, Authy app straight from the App Store. It doesn't know who I am yet. <clears throat> and so it's asking me to say, well, let's sign up. And we use the phone number as a primary identification method for the user. Uh, all of our solutions are bootstrapped with the, uh, with the phone number. And it's going to say, well, okay, well, you're setting up. I see you already have an account. How, how would you like to verify this, uh, this device. On the bottom you can see that I could use an existing device. Well, I lost my existing device so that's not going to work, but maybe if I had my tablet or my Chrome app I could use that existing device to authorize. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use SMS and we're going to get an SMS sent to my brand new phone where they transferred the phone number to it. I can go in here and uh, grab, that, um, grab that token, come back in here, and it's going to bring everything back down. Authy and Google Authenticator compatible tokens are all here. Now, if any of you that use Google Authenticator have ever tried to move to a new device after losing the original device, this is a really painful experience. And this is one big thing that we do for our end users is make sure that they can continue to operate uh, securely and reliably while still being able to accidentally lose their phone, break their phone. Uh, and provide those redundant options with multi-device. One of the things I can do as an end user, oh, 
here's all my devices that I actually trust. This is the one I lost. Let's remove that device. And then for all of the Authy tokens, that device is no longer going to successfully authenticate. It is shut down. And this is all user self-service. User can also come in and change their phone number, change their email address securely because they've already proven themselves with the device. Okay. Um, so Coinbase is actually currently working on implementing uh, uh, Authy One Touch into their solution along with a lot of other uh, uh, providers. It is relatively new. Uh, so to show you the uh, complete consolidated solution, I've got uh, a sample application put together here. It's called AllBank. I'm already registered for two-factor in AllBank, so when I press login, it's going to bring me uh, a, uh, a consolidated authentication dialog here, and it's going to bring me up to an AllBank user login. This is Authy One Touch here. First off, it's telling me that it's a user login. Second off, it's giving a whole bunch of information for the user that you choose to send as an app owner. What information might they need to make a decision about whether they're going to approve or deny this? Now, of course, they're going to approve it, generally speaking, if they're logging in onto the application. They're just going to press approve and it's going to be easy. But if they get this and it's like, what's that all about? They press deny. That can actually be a trigger to uh, initiate a fraud investigation. Something's going on that they don't know about. Um, but I'm just going to approve this here, and you're going to see, just by pressing the approve button, it's going to send a call back to the application and actually log me in. So now I'm in the application. Let's, uh, let's uh, do a money transfer. We're going to send $2 million to uh, the North American Bitcoin Conference. Thanks for all the hard work. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, submit that off. No initial, no first factor, no username and password. Um, but here's the transaction. You can see that the information changed. I'm sending money to TNABC. It's $3 million, $2 million. And uh, it's like, well, oh, I didn't mean to do that. I don't know what's going on. Let me deny that. And it'll actually go ahead and uh, uh, deny it, put it in my deny queue, and uh, send that receipt back, or send that signed transaction that I denied this back. Because the details of the transaction are actually signed by the private key on each unique device, uh, you actually have some level of non-repudiation. You know exactly what was approved or denied. It's not just a token authentication. It's actually a transaction with details that they approved or denied. This could be used in circumstances a little different than what I showed here. It could be used for a parent-child relationship. The child is trying to buy something on, uh, uh, on his gaming site, and the parent could get a notification while they're at work. Uh, Jimmy wants to buy some uh, some tokens, and you could approve that. You could turn this into a multi-approval system. Maybe the bank manager has to also approve this size of a transaction, and you can create that out-of-band uh, uh, solution uh, yourself. You, as the application owners, can define what how this all works. Uh, so I promised I would show you how the different solutions work together. So far, you've seen one touch inside AllBank. Uh, let's go ahead and um, log off here. I'm going to put my phone, my brand new phone that I just got, into airplane mode. Let's say I am down in the basement, or I'm at an internet cafe, or some other reason that my phone can't be online. And I still need to log in. The desktop has, has access, but I don't. So in that airplane mode, I'm not going to get that push notification. It still went through, but I'm not going to get it. Uh, and I can actually manually come here find my specific token in, in, with my system in offline mode and still successfully validate. Same account, same user, different method to get in as a fallback in those circumstances that, uh, that he might need it. I can take it a step further. Let me take this um, back offline. Let's say I didn't even have the app. Um, for whatever reason, I haven't had a chance to download it. It's my brand new phone. I haven't downloaded it yet. I could send some money. I'm going to ignore those push notifications for a moment uh, that came through. And I'm actually going to come down here and say, I don't have a smartphone. Send me an SMS. And we'll actually get the SMS code delivered to my phone. There it is, 1733055. We use the same validation. It's the same kind of token.
Now I got in with SMS. I created this, this dialogue. You can actually control that entire user experience. You can do it slightly differently. You have a lot of options, a lot of flexibility to do this. How many people in the room are actually developers or work at a software company? A couple of you here? All right. So one of the things we hear, I mean, developers are brilliant. They're amazing people. They can build anything. Why would you use Authy if we could build this ourselves? And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the justification for why you would consider a service. First off, you guys aren't in the two-factor authentication business. You're in the Bitcoin industry. Your focus is in a different place, as it should be. Our focus is entirely on uh, two-factor authentication and staying current in that two-factor authentication. Let's talk about what Build It Yourself looks like. You have a, a, user set, a set of users and an application that you own and you have your users. Uh, you want to control how the user logs into your application, how two-factor is implemented, when it's actually called. You want to be in charge of that. You don't want to trust somebody else to make those decisions for you. Your business case is unique. You want to be able to challenge when you think it's right. And of course, you need to implement the profile logic on how you actually turn on two-factor in the first place. If you want push, you're going to have to build that push logic with Apple and Google, maybe Microsoft, uh, anybody else. Uh, you could maybe use a consolidation service for that push logic, but you need to build that. Um, you also have to have an application that can respond, receive those notifications, and allow the user to approve or deny. Now, you might have an application already, and with Authy, you can use our application or you can use our SDK, uh, but um, if you use Authy's application, you're going to get that all built for you. You never even have to go on the mobile side. Then you need to arrange for that callback that you saw that actually automatically gets the user logged in when they press approve or deny to, to maintain that user experience. If you want to back down to one-time passwords, you need to have the one-time password logic system in your solution. Uh, if you want to fall back to SMS or voice, well, you're going to need to have a gateway, and then you're going to need to have some vendor relationships. We take care of all of this. We have a very intelligent routing system. Uh, something you may not know is Authy was purchased by Twilio last year. Uh, and we're actually, we've always been running on Twilio, but we run on a whole bunch of different providers globally. We take care of that for you. Then you need to monitor, do the security testing, host all of this infrastructure to make this work, and then maintain it. Uh, every time a new uh, operating system comes out on mobile, you need to make sure that you're ready for it, because this is authentication we're talking about. You need to make sure that you're ready for it before that operating system hits the streets. And then you need to support the two-factor components that you've added to your application. So let's talk about how it looks with Authy 2FA. You still have the application, still have the users. You still control that login logic, the 2FA logic, turning it on, the profile logic. That's all your, in your control. Everything else is either in the Authy cloud service or the Authy application or the Authy SDK on, on the mobile device. We take care of that security testing, that load, that scalability, the monitoring, and we actually even provide end user 2FA support as part of our offering. What's so special about us? Uh, we've had five nines since 2012. We've been through Coinbase's ups and downs. We've seen every attack under the sun, and we've responded and built all of what we learned into our platform, into our solution. Uh, we're proven. We have over 2.6 million users and uh, uh, 12,000 integrations today. And I think probably most importantly, a lot of really big companies have chosen to use our service when they are certainly capable of building it themselves. Uh, uh, Coinbase, BitGo, um, Dell, Twitch just went live for all of their users. Uh, uh, if you're a developer, maybe you know about Atlassian. Atlassian just signed on to turn on Authy2FA for all of their users. Uh, Cloudflare has been a customer for a very long time. They only offer Authy because we offer the solution that reduces their support costs dramatically over a Google Authenticator implementation. So if you have any questions, just stop by our booth or visit uh, www.authy.com. I'll be outside, and thank you very much.